Welcome to Driving Participation with Beth Dovsky, a podcast for sharing great ideas that get people involved and active in organizations. Join us to learn what marketers and fundraisers around the country are doing to get people to show up, stick around, and give back. Hello, and welcome to Driving Participation. This is Beth Brodowski. Today, I have something a little bit different for you. Giving Tuesday, the National Day of Giving on the Tuesday after American Thanksgiving, is now in its fourth year. While it's a baby in the world of fundraising tactics, it's clearly become a movement worth noting. Blackboard says that more than $46 million was raised last year on Giving Tuesday, so it's clearly making more than noise at this point. One of the coolest things about doing this podcast is that I now have 78 new friends that I can call on to check the pulse of what's happening in the nonprofit world. I emailed all the nonprofits and the consultants who have been guests on the show, and I asked them what they are doing or what they're seeing happening for Giving Tuesday this year. So for this week's episode, I gathered up all the ideas and the links that they sent so that I can share them with you. So I'm going to start off with the nonprofit insiders. Barry Martin of the Children's Organ Transplant Association, CODA, C-O-T-A, was on the show with me back in October of 2014. Barry has retired, but Jordan Lewis uh, responded to me, and he shared that this year CODA has created a very simple campaign. What they did was they added three pages to their website, and they have what is called a hero image at the top. It's the large image that people often use at the top of a website, They included this adorable image of one of their transplant kids, and they created a hashtag um, called hashtag sign Coda Hope, C-O-T-A-H-O-P-E. They also added a countdown timer to their homepage of this little section that they created, and it shows how many days and hours until Giving Tuesday. This is a really great idea. There are many different tools and plugins that will let you add this type of a thing to your website. And if you Google add countdown timer to my website, you will find a number of them. So from there, as you go down the page, they offer two choices, get involved or give now. Get involved takes you to a resources page and they have listed a really clear single request. You can make a difference by sharing CODA's mission online. So then they provide Facebook cover images They provide um, a number of different profile images that you can use on Facebook or in Twitter or pretty much any other social media site that has that, that avatar image. And then it also has a bunch of post images that you can use along with instructions on how to create an unselfie to support their cause. So that whole page pretty much talks about share our story on social media. That's the only thing that they ask for when they go down that page. If you take the other path, the second page is just a straightforward donation page that's all designed and customized to match their campaign. I think the simplicity of their campaign is really going to help people take action. If you offer too many options and people have to read to understand what you want, it causes friction. And then what happens a lot of times is that nobody can make a decision and so they move on. So if you want to see what CODA did, um, their page is at CODA, C-O-T-A dot org, front slash giving hyphen Tuesday. And I'm going to have a lot, a lot of links in this episode because I have a lot of examples to share with you. So every single one of the links that I share is going to be on the show notes page. And this week, that means that it's at Iris Creative. That's W-W-W-I-R-I-S-C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E, Iris Creative, front slash DP079. So the next person that uh, shared their story with me was uh, Germantown Academy. I spoke with Heather Durkin back in episode 12 of the podcast. And she connected me with one of her colleagues, Jessica Hall, who is the assistant director of the annual fund at Germantown Academy. Jessica said that GA incorporates Giving Tuesday into their overall year-end giving annual giving strategy rather than doing a completely separate campaign with its own theme. So like CODA, they have created a landing page on their website. And while CODA has a page that has two side-by-side buttons, either to share or to give, 
GA's page is linear, so it focuses on giving a gift, and then only lower down on the page does it mention participating on social. So what they want you to do is go through, they want to prioritize giving, and then participating social is a secondary thing for them, as opposed to CODA, which made those two things equal choices for people. The key is to be really clear about what you're looking for as a result of Giving Tuesday and make sure that you design a plan to match. If your priority is giving, then making sure you do what GA did makes a lot of sense. But if sharing and growing your list is also important to you, CODA's approach could work for you. How you design and lay out your landing page, it really says a lot about what you're prioritizing because it's going to direct people to do what you want based on where you place things on a page. Jessica also has plans to engage her annual fund volunteers in encouraging their peers to participate on Giving Tuesday. Asking volunteers to do one specific thing and then giving them the tools to do it is a really great path to engagement. And your volunteers are going to be so thankful that they know exactly what to do and when they are finished. Sometimes volunteers really struggle when you say things like join in or help us out or share our story. And they don't really know when they've done enough or when they've completed and can check helping you out off of their list. So asking them to do something specific, like please post this on your Facebook page and then giving them an image and a written post that's exactly what they can do to just copy and paste in place, it really, it really helps them take action. So GA has been warming up their followers um, over the past few weeks by posting links on their landing page or links to the landing page on their social media. So they've been, every Tuesday since November 3rd, they have been posting thank yous to their community. And then as the campaign moves on, this week, they're going to start promoting matching gifts. And in the last week, right before Giving Tuesday, they're going to encourage followers to hashtag their unselfies. And they have their own hashtag Giving Tuesday GA that they're using. So I really like how they've created a content plan that changes week by week because then you can have people who have participated, um, they can join in on the next thing as opposed to saying, you know, I already did my unselfie and so I'm done and I don't have to do it. If you, if you have a rolling set of things that you're asking people to participate in, maybe they're going to want to jump in and do the next thing as well. And on the flip side, if somebody sees something that you're asking them to do and isn't interested in that, oh, I, I hate taking a picture of myself, so I would never do it on selfie. But then the next week is, well, here's this post we've put out. Can you share it with your community? They might feel more comfortable doing that. So I will post a link on the show notes page also to Germantown Academy, um, but it's germantownacademy.net is the, is the page, and um, the Giving Tuesday link is a little bit long, so I'm going to have you go to the page, um, the show notes page, and take a look at it there. I also heard back from Steve Varnum, and Steve was from episode 48. Steve was a listener of the podcast, and he came on the show last April to share his rebranding story. And I was so excited because it's always nice to have somebody that actually is a listener to the show contact me and say, I have a really great story to share too. So the Community Loan Fund is the organization that Steve works with, and they're using Giving Tuesday this year to spark gifts through a series of matching grants that are going to be announced throughout the day right on Giving Tuesday. But they are doing some things to warm their fans up and get them you know, inspired and, and paying attention to them. So they're having their staff post on selfies, and they're using the hashtag Join Our Crowd, which has been a theme that they've been using for the year, and it's specifically the theme of their annual report. So that makes a lot of sense. Their, their community is already used to this hashtag. They've seen it. And now they're specifically asking them to take an unselfie and tag that hashtag. Hashtags can be a really great thing to use during a campaign like this because you can then gather up everything and collect it and see what's come out of it. Last year, what they did was they alternated branded image posts, um, things that they created that were you know, had some marketing aspect to them. And they used a theme called Opportunity. Um, and, and they had a number of posts go out like that. And they also had unselfies going out throughout the day and through the early evening. And Steve said that the unselfies got significantly more engagement and donations coming directly from them. Now, based on that, 
I know it will be easy to assume that unselfies are the thing that works. You know, if if unselfies are the things that are getting all the engagement and donations, obviously those are both the two th reasons that you do this. But you're going to see as you listen to this episode that all kinds of things can work. And sometimes it's actually the combination of tactics and seeing the different things that you're posting over time that really makes a difference. Giving Tuesday is still a really new event. I mean, I know it's four years old now, but in, in the scope of all the things fundraising, that's new. And so I really just would suggest that when it comes to giving, giving Tuesday and, and online communications and giving days in general, that you keep your mind open and your options open as you evaluate what other people are doing and what might work for your organization. Uh, next, I heard from um, Allison Zeidman. So we are really lucky. Um, I'm in Philadelphia, as many of you know, and we have a thriving arts and cultural community. And it's all supported by an organization called the Greater Philadelphia Cultural Alliance. Last year, I actually went physically downtown, my very first in-person show that I did. And I spoke with Michael Norris, um, Tracy Buchanan, and Allison Zeidman about at the time, they're innovative, like it was a fairly new program called STAMP, and it's a teen program for getting students off the streets and out of their houses and getting together to go and experience some arts and culture and have something constructive to do with their time after school. It's gone, the program has just done really, really well. And for the last two years, the Alliance has dedicated their Giving Tuesday efforts to promoting and supporting the program. So that's one idea that you can consider. If you're an organization that has many different programs going on, you could dedicate your Giving Tuesday campaign to focusing on one specific thing that maybe is doing really well or is just getting kicked off or maybe that one thing could use a little extra spotlight of love and attention. And in 2013, they started out and they made a very specific to ask. It takes $10 to cover the cost of one annual pass for one teen. So that's what they asked people for. And starting out with a really focused request is, is really similar to what Germantown Academy is doing with their volunteers, asking them to do one specific thing, share this post with your friends. By asking for one like easy to understand and affordable thing, it's, it's really easy for people to decide if they're in or if they're out. And so they tend to take action, which can be great. So if you're just starting out um, with Giving Tuesday or you're just starting out trying to build your supporters, having one single specific ask can be a really great way to go. But the downside of doing something so specific and also something so small and specific is that you have no idea how much more somebody would have given if you just left it up to them. So the next year, they went a different direction. And in 2014, they, they, they gave a broad invitation to their supporters that was invest in Philly teens, invest in stamp. And they didn't put any numbers around it. And the program was a really big success, and it exceeded their goal, and it raised more than $15,000, which is a pretty good accomplishment. This year, they are working to help their members do more with Giving Tuesday. So they've done a couple of things for themselves the last two years. This year, they decided to focus on the members of the Cultural Alliance and how can they educate them and give them more resources. So two weeks ago, I joined them as a moderator for a tweet chat where we talked about things like crowdfunding and Giving Tuesday and year-end end campaigns and how people can generate sort of new funds through online campaigns at the end of the year. And as much time as I spend on Twitter, it was actually my first time as the leader of a tweet chat. And even with, there were three moderators, and it was still a big challenge to keep up, but it was a lot of fun, and it was such an easy and free way to do a live event. It's something I would highly recommend to any of you if you haven't tried it yet, and you do tend to have a following on Twitter. So they captured that chat on Storify, which is a, a free and really easy resource that you can use if you do something like a Twitter chat or... Or, 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 or using a hashtag, if you decide for your Giving Tuesday post to use a hashtag, Storify can capture all of the tweets around that hashtag and pull them together into one page that archives them. And it's if you're going to take the time to do a tweet chat, you get the benefit of it being this live, fun, exciting event. But Storify gives the ability to take that event and turn it into a piece of content that you can share with the people that didn't have time and, and weren't there for it. So... 
um, there's a long hashtag for it, but I'm going to give you, I made a short link for you, which is just bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, front slash P-H-L arts chat. So it's P-H-L-A-R-T-S-C-H-A-T. And there'll be a link to that in the show notes page on Iris Creative front slash DP079 as well. The other thing that happens a lot that you might have seen with Giving Tuesday are regional programs. And we've had a number of people on the show that have been involved in doing different regional focused efforts for Giving Tuesday. And so I have to start off with Jamie McDonald because by now I'm sure you've all heard about really one of the foundational success stories of Giving Tuesday, which is the Be More Gives More campaign. If you haven't read anything about it, go back and listen to Jamie's episode, which was episode 13, uh, where she talks about it, or um, Google Google the campaign, because it was, I think, the first regional campaign around Giving Tuesday that was, you know, location-based, and, and it's really become a great case study for that type of an effort. So um, Baltimore's goal was to use that day to shine a light on, you know, what's wonderful about their city. And they decided that they were going to claim the title, which is a title that they invented, of the most generous city in the country. And they wanted to raise $5 million across all nonprofits. And that's something that's important for you to know that you can do. You can create your own title. You can, you can label something or make something up and kind of turn something into your own event or your own holiday. And, and that's what Baltimore did. They put a spin on Giving Tuesday by deciding to go for the effort of making themselves the most generous city in the country. And so they, they did that and more. They, they, they beat their goal of $5 million, and they ended up hitting about $5.7 million. And Jamie talks a lot about this program on her episode that she did on Giving Days. Her Giving Tuesday campaigns over the last two years, 2013 and 2014, have raised, get this, over $20 million. Now, we're talking that all of Giving Tuesday has raised $46, $47 million. Actually, that was just last year. If you put the two of them together, it's probably $80 million. But still, $20 million is a big chunk of that. And so Jamie is really you know, one of the leaders in figuring out what, what's working in this movement. And she gave me a slideshow to share with all of you um, that has the steps that she takes to make her program so successful. And her slides actually have checklists right on the slides, so they're really, really useful. And if you go to the show notes page at Iris Creative DP 079, you're going to find a link so that you can actually look through this whole slideshow yourself. I also have Bill Moore on. Bill is from Zoo Miami, and he decided to take a local approach to um, the Giving Day as well. He told me that locally, the Miami Foundation hosts a program called Give Miami Day, and it's a 24-hour online giving event, and it's on November 19th, so it's actually um, the week before, is that two weeks before? It's a little bit before Giving Tuesday. Um, The Miami Foundation does something really special to, I guess, encourage people to participate in their program and also to help support local nonprofits. They offer a bonus gift for every donation between $25 and $10,000. It doesn't say online what the bonus gift is, at least not at the moment. Maybe when Giving Tuesday kicks off, you'll see. So go look up Give Miami Day. I'll have a link to it. It's givemiamiday.org. And you can see how they have their page set up and and what's happening. Um, And there's a hashtag for it as well. So in addition to supporting what's happening locally, participants get this benefit of this extra gift for participating in the event. And, And by participants, I mean all of the organizations that choose to participate in Give Miami are gonna get this bonus. But all of their fans, it's, it's, it plays it out two different levels. Everybody that they promote to, it lets them be able to say, hey, we have this bonus that we're going to get. It kind of takes the place of a matching grant that you don't have to go out and find yourself. And it lets you tell your supporters, hey, this organization is going to you know, give me more out of your gift if you give me something. And people really respond to that. So the takeaway from this is that Giving Tuesday is not the only way to catch the wave of a giving day. There's there's lots of different local programs. Um, 
One more that I'd like to highlight is um, Marley Honkoop, who spoke to me. That was episode 64. And Marley uh, works for Donors Forum, which is the state association for nonprofits in Illinois. And they supported the All Give Big event. And it's, I always think it looks funny online because it's I-L-L, which looks like a three, one, two, three L's. I'll Give Big. Um, but it's, Il, it's, it's Illinois Give Big. But it kind of plays out both ways. So rather than ask people to give to I'll Give Big or give to individual uh, members of their organization or even give to themselves, they did something really, really unique. And Marley talks about this in her episode. They asked the foundation members of their, of their organization to come together to promote the I'll Give Big event and to promote the nonprofits of Illinois. And they did it in a really unique way. They did it through a media buy. So the cost of buying media, like, and I'm talking about things like airtime on the radio, on television, the back of a bus, a bus shelter, like big public media is expensive. And it's a great way to spread the word about ca the a campaign, but it's often way beyond the budget of any individual nonprofit. And getting stations to like donate PSA time to you, it can often leave you with time slots or shows or locations that aren't really reaching your ideal audience. When you, when you get things for free, any of you that have tried pro bono work before, sometimes it works out great, but not always. You, you don't really always have control over what you get. It's, it's a gift, but it sometimes is a little difficult to use or implement or, or get exactly what you want out of it. So Donors Forum partnered with their foundation members because they wanted to fund a media purchase to purchase primetime airtime. They wanted to be able to make sure that people heard their message, the right people heard their messages, and so they decided to fund the purchase of that rather than asking those stations to donate leftover time. This was a huge success in driving people to the campaign. It also raised awareness so that when organizations told their supporters they were participating in the program, it was already recognized. So the airtime promoted the whole I'll Give Big event and the campaign, and then individual nonprofits were able to participate in the campaign knowing that it already had a greater sense of awareness among their community. I love that this group thought totally differently about what they could do to support the program, and they came up with a gift that they could give local nonprofits that really helped raise up all the participants. So that's available at um, donorsforum.org. I'll give big, and the link to it will be in the show notes. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about perspective from some consultants. We... Um, one of the things I really try and do on the show is make sure that I get all kinds of different perspectives. I love to hear what people working in nonprofits have to say because they're in the trenches doing the work, seeing what's happening in their own specific organization. But it's also really important to hear what consultants and vendors and people working with nonprofits are seeing. They bring this horizontal perspective from being a little bit removed and from doing the same work often with many different organizations, it brings a different perspective that I think is equally important. And so I've been lucky enough to have some terrific um, consultants also add their perspective to the show, and they've offered um, some great tips for me, and they've also written a lot of articles that they shared the links with me to that I want to direct you to. So um, I'm going to kick it off with Pamela Grow, um, especially because she's actually one of my local buddies in nonprofit. So she was one of my first guests, probably because I knew her in person and I knew she'd say yes. And interestingly enough, when I asked her about it, the jury is actually still out for her on the value of Giving Tuesday. And I, I think that that's an important perspective to bring to this conversation. But it's important for you to know who Pam is. Her focus is on small staff organization. And when you only have one person doing everything, adding something new can turn into that random one-off that distracts you from your core work. It's not even that Giving Tuesday itself might not raise much money for a small organization. For Pam, it's more that in an effort to jump on the Giving Tuesday bandwagon, the things that you're already doing to bring you money can suffer. So 
Pam has written a number of posts reflecting the pros and cons of Giving Tuesday in her perspective for small shops. And if you're on the fence, this is a really a great place to read something that may be very relevant for you in helping you make your decision. Um, over on the show notes page at episode 79, you're going to have links to three terrific posts that she wrote. Um, one I love is called Giving Tuesday, Should a Nonprofit Bother? Um, and then she also has one with a really terrific case study for the Mr. Holland's Opus Foundation. So there's some great links to some good articles that are, are worth taking a look at. Like Pam, Lynn Wester did an experiment in giving to organizations. Um, I, I know she talks about this a lot. Pam likes to give to organizations and see how they respond back to her. She talks about it in her posts. Um, Lynn, tried, Lynn did the same thing, and she did it in online donations to see how they responded. Interestingly enough, Lynn took it even to another level and that she created a spreadsheet detailing what happened. So she cataloged her frustration level, whether she got online receipts, the mobile compatibility of the site and the ability to donate online on a mobile device, and a whole bunch of other factors. Lynn was on episode 42, and she was talking about in that episode thanking and showing impact before asking again. So you're going to see in what she writes how the importance of that flow shows up in her expense experiment. One of the things that she said is that a number of the organizations that she gave to online asked her for another gift the same day. And for her, that is like, you know, the complete opposite of what she thinks that people should be doing. It's a great spreadsheet. It's a terrific resource. And she shares that tool and the examples of what she saw in a, in a post that she wrote. And the link is on the site that you'll be able to take a look at. Um, another one of my favorites is John Hayden, who writes a lot on this subject. John was on episode 46, and he is one of the best people out there at offering really simple steps for trying something new. It's, it's one of the things that I think is really wonderful. He does 15-minute webinars. He does very short blog posts with a capture of a presentation that has just a few slides in it. So he does a great job of really getting to the heart and saying, do these five things and you'll be on the road. So he shared um, a couple of different ideas for Giving Tuesday, and these are really great ones because, you know, it is only two weeks to go. And so at this point, you're kind of needing ideas that are things that you could still execute if, you, you know, if you haven't started anything, or you're looking for ways to make the things that you've already planned to do really maximize and make the most of it. So he has um, three posts that, that I'm going to be sharing on the page. And uh, to, uh, one of them is on a, how to create a photo sharing campaign, which, you know, is such an easy thing for you to do. And I, I would bet that in many of your Giving Tuesday plans, if you're using the unselfie movement or anything where you're asking people to share photos, that's very commonly um, a factor of one of these campaigns. So John's tips on how to do it really well would be very helpful if that's in your plans. And it's an easy thing to add if you haven't thought of anything yet. The other thing that I'm sharing is um, a, a program that he wrote, a, a blog post that he wrote on effective use of hashtags. Giving Tuesday is um, huge for hashtags, and um, and it, it's really a great place to use them. It's a great place to capture them. So learning how to do them well is is a really great thing to do. In Justin Ware's episode, which is episode number 22, he was all about preparing for an event like Giving Tuesday by building a team of online ambassadors. In his post on last minute tactics, he offers ways to find people outside of your organization who could be great potential online supporters. And I think this is a really helpful tip because many of you are thinking, I don't know if I have anybody that could be a supporter. Of course you should look within your organization, but I love, John, uh, I love Justin's ideas about um, other ways, in addition to the people that you already have, how could you use Giving Tuesday to find new people that could potentially be great online supporters? Joe Waters from episode 36 shares with us his presentation on using Giving Tuesday for inbound marketing. He includes links to articles that he's written about building and promoting your campaign. And I especially like his article from the Chronicle of Philanthropy uh, about taking a lesson from the retailers of Black Friday. You know, this is a perspective that we don't often hear in the nonprofit build, love, and engagement space. 
the reality is that retailers know how to get people to take action. And there's a lot that nonprofits can really learn from their tactic. He mentions a study done by this wonderful group called Witch Test One, and it's W-O-N, not O-N-E. And Witch Test One is an organization that does split testing and looks at two different ways to sell the same thing and evaluates which way worked better. And a test that they did showed that a countdown timer, like we mentioned in what Coda is doing, can boost sales 9%. So... There's a lot of different things that you might be seeing as you're doing your own web browsing through the season that could be things that you could incorporate into your program and doing things that set a time limit that make something seem urgent works very, very well in retail. That's why people get up at crazy hours on Black Friday to go shopping. And there may be some of these ways that would be appropriate for you to incorporate into your organization. And Elizabeth Weaver Engel agrees with Joe on this Black Friday concept. Her post on the Small Staff Big Impact site suggests that offering a year-end sale. Remember that many of you have customers and not just donors in your audience. If you have publications, tickets, memberships, or any kind of products, including logoed items, there are ways that you could use them as an incentive to give something back to your community. It doesn't have to be huge and it doesn't have to be public. If you're, say, a museum or a garden, for example, you could offer something like a free guest pass to your members by email as a really controlled way to show gratitude and also get more people in the door. So remember that not everything about Giving Tuesday has to be social or has to be public. You could use some of these techniques internally, quietly with your own group to attract their attention and warm them up for your end of year. Tony Martinetti podcasts for the Chronicle of Philanthropy as well, and he did an episode in September with the 92 Wise Asha Curran, and she's the Director of Innovation and Social Impact, Internal Relations, and Foundation Support. Asha, share, Asha shares all the amazing resources that are available on givingtuesday.org. So they, Giving Tuesday is amazing, and they're constantly creating new toolkits and new ideas and new guides for you. And definitely go take a look and see what they might have for you to use if you haven't looked at it yet. And listen to Asha, because not only does she list the kind of things that they have, she talks about how to use them and what you can do. I had Kate Sheridan on the show, um, who from also from 92Y, last year, um, and it was episode 28, if you want to hear more directly from the source of Giving Tuesday about what's happening. I met Rachel Hutchinson of Blackboard at the 92Y Six Months Until Giving Tuesday event this year back in June. In episode 65, she talked about putting your brand in supporters' hands, and Giving Tuesday is a perfect example of how you can do that. Rachel connected me to BlackBuds online and social marketing manager, Madeline Turner, who wrote a fabulous piece um, on the NP Engage blog about Dress for Success's Giving Shoes Day campaign. I cannot tell you how much I love that. I love everything about this program. They, and the reason I love it is because everything just connects so beautifully. I think the key that makes this work is that they really, really know their audience. Everything about the campaign, from how easy it is for a busy woman to participate to the prize of a limited edition shoe for top performers, is aligned to their perfect person. And not only what she wants, but why she would care about this cause. Madeline says, they're asking women to visualize another woman walking in her shoes, literally, and taking her first step to a better future. Did you see how even the language is shoe-focused, saying things like taking her first step to a better future? It's all crafted beautifully to align with a woman who is a working woman, who has worn professional shoes, knows what it's like to be a working woman, cares about shoes, and wants to give that forward to another woman. 
What I really like best about this campaign, it is truly a, a gateway to a deeper connection with this person. The event kicks off a direct mail campaign where they share stories of the impact of shoe donations. Now, you haven't heard anything else about that so far. So the thing I loved about this campaign is that it starts on Giving Tuesday and then goes beyond Giving Tuesday. Some of the other programs warmed up to Giving Tuesday and then Giving Tuesday was the big bang. And some of the other, and then I think GAs, for example, it was just slightly integrated with what else they do. So there's lots of different ways that you can do this. It's actually very similar to what Sean King in episode 70 was talking about, this idea of using Giving Tuesday as the beginning of a new conversation. And it might not even be a literal, like a donation. It might just be a, a friend gathering campaign where you use something like this to attract new people so that then you can communicate with them later. But I really love how they actually have a plan to play this, this program out and and do direct mail specifically around this topic. In another blog post, Madeline reflects back on what the Be More Gives More campaign has has accomplished. She makes an important point that it's not often, that's it's really not often brought up when we talk about the successes of these online events. And she says, when setting a goal, you have to make it big and ambitious enough that people are willing to rally around it and work harder than usual to make it happen. You have to be willing to fail. That is a scary thought for most development, communication, and executive directors. Failure is a huge fear. I think we all need to work on this and to push ourselves to create a culture that that has room for this kind of experimentation, though. I am a really big fan of stepping into a donor's world and connecting with what is important to them. Dress for Success is doing it with their shoe focus campaign. And even better, if like Joe recommends, you can focus on what's important to them right now. And this week, what are your supporters thinking about? Many of them are thinking about turkey, traveling, dealing with their in-laws, and shopping. So... If you would like to do something to connect your message to the people that are thinking about the holiday shopping arc that really consumes most of us Americans around this time of year, I actually have created something uh, to help you with that. I've created a Giving Tuesday campaign and it could really help you jump into Giving Tuesday without distracting you from your core work. So it's something that you could add to what you're doing now and just have it flow behind your core campaign, or if you're busy and you haven't had time to do anything yet, or like Pam says, you're focused on your annual campaign this year and really don't want to put any energy into something else, what I wanted to do was create a campaign that you could lift and use um, and execute without a whole lot of effort on your part. So what it is, is it's a seven-day countdown, and it goes from the Wednesday before Thanksgiving through Giving Tuesday. And there's a bonus post for after the event, or as Sean King calls it, Thank You Thursday, which I love. It includes images that you can customize with your logo and post on social media, or you can use them in email if that works better for you. And on top of the graphic images, they're they're all sized to primarily work on something like Facebook. They're fairly square. Um, I also wrote a plan to go with it that um, gives you ideas and for posts and questions and quizzes that you can ask people to participate and and get them involved and starting to engage with you leading up to Giving Tuesday. You can find um, the toolkit on our Nonprofit Toolkit site, which is nonprofittoolkit.net, front slash Giving Tuesday hyphen seven hyphen day hyphen countdown. And there'll be a link to that in the show notes page as well. But go take a look at it. Um, Hopefully it's something that could help you kick off your annual giving uh, end of year campaign or, or kick off your Giving Tuesday activities. The last thing I want to point you to is that I actually last year started a Pinterest page that has examples of Giving Tuesday campaigns and different great ideas that people are using. If you go to Pinterest and search for Iris Creative, you should find it, and it's on a board called Great Giving Tuesday Marketing. So take a look there for some more ideas. And if you've done something that you'd like to share with me, I would love to include it on the board. If it's something you did last year 
or after you've finished your campaign this year, I would love to share examples um, of what you're doing. So please feel free to email me and let me know what you're up to, what you're doing for Giving Tuesday at Beth, B-E-T-H, at iriscreative.com to share your story. Last, I just want to say I really appreciate all my guests who shared their thoughts and the campaigns that they're working on with us. This program is so much richer for all the people who come together to share their knowledge and their experience with me and all of you in the nonprofit community. I am truly grateful for all of you for participating with me. To get easy access to all of the many, many resources in this episode, just go to www.iriscreative.com front slash DP079. Have a great week and have a wonderful Giving Tuesday. Thank you for listening to Driving Participation. For more strategies to boost involvement in your organization, subscribe in iTunes and follow Beth Brodowski on Twitter. Driving Participation is a production of Iris Creative Group Incorporated. Communication builds community.